My name is Paul Stein, and I'm a sculptor. My speciality at the moment is working in stainless steel and making that flat sculpture. If I walk over to this work, I'll be able to explain some of the techniques involved and some of the ideas. A piece like this was originally conceived on paper. I had made a sketch for it. And I then developed this by making cardboard cutouts and polystyrene models. And these ideas were then transformed onto a computer. And I modeled the forms in the computer and got close to the kind of ideas which I had originally thought of. My approach to making sculpture is what's known as the direct method approach. And this is in strict contrast to the plastic method which is involved, which the outcome is a cast bronze piece, and that involves perhaps casting or making a master in plaster or such similar material, and then having a casting method. With this discipline, certain constraints are involved. A sheet of steel would arrive, and before I do anything to the sheet, I would have a very, very strict, careful, plan how these various steps that would be involved. I can't simply scrape the paint off the canvas and start again. I have to know exactly every step of the way, because mistakes can be costly in terms of time, and I have to know that the sculptures have to work before I make it. And that takes a lot of, a lot of thought. Edges on a piece of stainless sculpture are very, very important. And the way you define your sculptures is primarily by the edges. I use a method known as TIG welding, which is literally drop by drop, like a water drop, it's that half, half a drop of water, and the weld proceeds forward. It's quite slow, but this is the only way to do it. Then a whole series of grinding processes take place, Coarse to find to smooth, we literally grind off the well and finish it to the desired finish. Stainless steel is inherently a very dull material, a dull clay, and the challenge is to bring it to life. And there are various methods to do this. You can mirror polish it, as in the bottom section of the sculpture. You can brush finish it, and you can vary the grain of the brush vary the direction and you can place other pieces on the surface to give the surface more relief. This middle section I've scored the surface where I've taken a grinder and I've actually cut into the metal and then lay that over the paint and then sand that off and it's given it an interesting texture. The idea behind this piece and the idea which is fascinates me at the moment is the idea of genesis. And this is the idea of a seed, germination of a seed, seed pod, or it could be an idea. Anything which begins, begins a process and has to find its way into the universe. This particular idea, this particular sculpture, expresses the idea of a pod, a seed pod. This is the seed. Either part of a piece of sculpture would represent the spot, the, the, the pot. And I've given that sculpture a form. The sculpture is three dimensional. It's very important for a sculpture to be three dimensional. And then thinking of, of the great challenges of sculpture, in fact, the biggest challenge of sculpture is thinking of the third dimension. That means thinking of all four points of the canvas, so not just the front view. On the side view, it's the three-quarter view, it's the southwest view, it's four points of the compass. And this is really a tricky part, in my opinion, in making sculpture. This piece encapsulates the idea of fluid movement. It's a purely abstract sculpture. I can see this as a wave, I can see this as a sea line, perhaps a dolphin sinuous movements that you would see sea life as they swim through the water. And it's purely reflected all over. And the 
it's a very model approach to it. Reflecting the surfaces, the reflections become the interest in the surface. Edges are very, very important as they define the sculpture, and particularly in a piece like this, they will pick up highlights, they will pick up lights, and give you a lovely definition. Otherwise, all your surfaces may have been into another. It's another reason why surfaces become terribly important in sculpture. Purely abstract form, and I'm drawn towards abstract, abstract sculpture because it's a bit like an abstract painting or portrait or a picture of a landscape, which is not representational. There's just a hint of clouds, perhaps a hint of greenery, and the mind fills in the rest. That's how I think of sculptures. The mind finishes the story. Thank you very much.